and welcome to Her Path to Success. My name is Tahara Hashem, and our program is brought to you by the Arab American Women's Business Council, whose mission is to empower Arab American women from diverse backgrounds and professions and industries through leadership and networking and professional development opportunities. Tonight, our guest is Dr. Fadia. She is an oral surgeon, and on top of everything else that she has done professionally, she decided to become, to become a personal life coach. And we'll get a little bit more from her on that. So, welcome, Fadia. Hello, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. So, let's just go ahead and get started on, tell us a little bit about your journey, and how did you decide to become a dentist mm -hmm. and an oral surgeon? And, uh, and then further on, tell us, where did you become a personal life coach? Okay, well, um, the decision started when I was a teenager mm -hmm. uh, in high school. I thought that uh, during my schooling, I had an inclination to biology and science. So I thought that, that uh, the medical field would be really a perfect fit for me. Also, the fact that I like to help people, and mm -hmm. that would be a nice way to uh, be able to join those two. And um, in Brazil, we go straight from high school to um, a professional degrees. Okay. So the decision was made very, pretty much very <laughs> young, Early um, on. very, uh, very young. And uh, um, uh, after um, high school, I started dental school, and uh, right away, I fell in love with surgery. Mm -hmm. I noticed that there was uh, um, a challenge to it and a, a need for knowledge that really intrigued me. So mm -hmm. early on, I decided to focus in uh, a surgery. And uh, um, when I finished uh, dental school in Brazil, I was very ambitious. So mm -hmm. I thought, well, where can I get the best training to become an oral maxillofacial surgeon? And uh, after a little research, I find out that the US has the best training. Okay. So, um, very um, ambitiously, I <laughs> left Brazil and I came here to study. And the journey took me inside the U.S. Uh, through different universities. Um, I started uh, by uh, going to University of Miami, the mm -hmm. Jackson Memorial Hospital. And then uh, it took me to um, New Orleans and mm -hmm. I went to Louisiana State University. Wow. And I finished my training here. Uh, in Detroit at Wayne State University at the Detroit Medical Center. So I find it very interesting that you grew up in Brazil. Yes. And you completely stepped out of your comfort zone. You came to a new country, uh, different language, different people, and you went to Miami, and then you went to Louisiana, which is not very many out up there. Mm -hmm. and. How, how did that affect you? How did that shape you? Um, I think the first thing is uh, to uh, make me a more resilient person mm -hmm. and more adaptable mm -hmm. and definitely more open-minded. Mm -hmm. Because when you have an opportunity to experience different cultures and different areas, uh, you definitely expand your horizons and your perceptions. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, there was really this uh, desire to go and travel it was since I was young at the age of 12 I told my father I wanted to learn English and he was like why would you like to learn English I said I will want to do my postgraduate studies overseas <laughs> wow. he was challenged he was really <laughs> I'm very intrigued where would you like to go I said I'm not sure but I know that English is very important so I want to start English so I guess aside from being part of my personality mm -hmm. I think I have to really put a lot of credit on my parents who yeah. uh, definitely encouraged me and did not really, you know, make me uh, change my mind about those things. So, yeah. That's and good. Yeah, it is very good. <laughs> I, I like the fact that you went out of your comfort zone. You weren't afraid to step out and you, and you took it down as a challenge and mm -hmm. a very positive challenge in the sense of you said, you know what, I can, I can move forward and I'm not going to let location or not knowing anyone have any effect on me. Absolutely, absolutely. I've always uh, kept uh, focused on the goal mm -hmm. and uh, thinking that if this is what I need to do, this is what I'm going to do. 
And uh, so several times I packed my belongings in a car and I travel across the U.S. <laughs> to the next hospital. So, yeah, it's a, it's a, it was an adventure, definitely an adventure. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So after that and after you finally graduated, how did you decide to go from there? You, you achieved your goal. You became an oral surgeon. Now what? Um, I think the greatest challenge when you graduate is really to find your niche as far as uh, how I'm going to practice, uh, what kind of doctor I am. Mm -hmm. Those are things that it's uh, really shaped partly by your training, but greatly by your personality yes. and how you view the world and how you want to express yourself. So um, the first step was really how I would like to practice and what kind of lifestyle I would like. Okay. Uh, as an oral surgeon, we are trained for very uh, broad spectrum of practice. And, um, and the lifestyle would be different if I had chosen to do more head and neck surgery or more trauma and things like that. So at that point, I decided I would like to have a more of a balance. So mm -hmm. I st stuck more to, to private practice. It's hard to have a balance. Yes. So how do you manage to do that, to have a balance between your career and your personal life and your family life? How do you still have both? How do you be social and have a family and talk to them and still have your career? It, that's a very good point because balance, I think, is something that's very hard, uh, especially if you have certain goals. And uh, But it comes also from the perception that um, not only one aspect of your life should take priority over all others. Mm -hmm. And uh, the main one, I think, in my case, is to learn to leave work at work. When I leave the office, uh, the mm -hmm. patients don't come home with me. <laughs> <laughs> the, I don't bring charts to write at home. So everything stays in the office. And I think that's the best uh, piece of advice I was given when I first graduated, mm -hmm. is not to take work home. And yeah. I agree with that. So is it hard emotionally for you to separate yourself and have that balance from career and, and social? I think the hard aspect for myself is to still be away from my family. My family continues to live in Brazil and mm. uh, I live here. Um, so that's a little bit of a, um, a balance that I, I still, you know, working on mastering. Um, but overall, I think the main thing is to do things that nurture yourself, mm -hmm. that you like to do, yeah. that make you happy, and that also uh, give you a, a sense of accomplishment, mm -hmm. you know, like um, the little things that you could do to make you happy, you know. That's good. I think it's important to note that while you're going up through success and, and you're going along your journey, it's very important to not forget yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because I think many times also if you don't have the balance, once you achieve your goal, mm -hmm. you feel empty. That's true. Because you feel that, okay, this goal has been accomplished, so what? What's next? Now what? Yeah. Right. It's, it's very hard to do that. Mm -hmm. So along those lines, something that I found very interesting was you you got to your goal, you reached it, mm -hmm. and so it seemed like you kind of set a new goal for yourself and you went into a, a different direction and became a personal life coach. Yes. Wanna, tell us a little <laughs> bit about that. Well, um, I noticed that many friends of mine uh, would come to me with their, um, you know, problems and things that they would like to talk about. And I saw, and I noticed that I like to really uh, talk to people and encourage people. Mm -hmm. um, I feel that this is a gift that I have. So I decided to do personal life coaching um, because it's a way for uh, to work in a, an aspect that I'm working with a different side of my brain. Mm -hmm. The you know one side is the left and this one is for the right, <laughs> and I can um, really be more playful and yeah. people get to know another side of myself mm -hmm. and. And I can, at the same time, feel like I'm impacting a person. Yeah. I think along the years, if you really pay attention to the things you experience and the lessons you learn, uh, there is a wisdom to it. And I like to be able to share this wisdom that I attained mm -hmm. with the people, you know. So it's really a fun thing to do. And it sounds fun. Yes. So how do you decide to go into something like that? It's not very mainstream, mm -hmm. and it's hard to to get it out there, to say, hey, you know, I'm a personal life coach. How did you plan to say, I know what I want to do, how do I get there? 
Um, and actually, this is actually very challenging, I agree, yeah. because uh, something like oral surgery, even though it's very hard and very difficult to study, it's very structured. Right. It, it's a path that you can follow, mm -hmm. while a personal life coach is a more ample and, and it's something that is done on a personal uh, mm -hmm. level. So uh, yes, uh, I think the first thing was uh, that I realized that I wanted to do this is really self-knowledge. I really spent a lot of time um, studying mm -hmm. um, the arts of the art of knowing yourself, of the of uh, mastering your thoughts, your emotions. So those are things that all, all, always intrigued me, mm -hmm. and I studied. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, uh, the gift in it for myself was really self love and self understanding. Wow. So I think when you really reach that point that you are very comfortable and very happy with who you are mm -hmm. is a point that you're really not afraid of the world. You really will go out there and you know that no matter what, that what's external to you mm -hmm. is not going to change who you are. True. You know, uh, we live in a society and in a world that is really expecting a lot from us. Yeah. And we, on, in turn, are expecting a lot of ourselves. And uh, um, we are sort of programmed to mm -hmm. expect the validation outside of ourselves. True. And when the truth is, the only validation we really need is the one that comes within us. It's really feel good with whom you are and how you um, express yourself. So those things really change. Um, your whole perception. So yeah, it is challenging to go out there and talk to people, but I find it uh, fun. It's something new, it's exciting. Yes, yes. And it's always good to give back. Absolutely. I was giving some classes recently and uh, my last class, um, I was open to the public and mm -hmm. uh, um, a lady crossed um, the whole state of Ohio from Pennsylvania wow. and she came to listen to me and I was so flattered yeah. um, and th the thing that she said the most she was like I really wanted to hear what you had to say wow. and that was very very important to me you know so what are some of the things that as a personal life coach um, how do you encourage your audience and what are some of the things that you would tell them well the first thing I would tell them is uh, Put yourself first, and uh, and when I say that is not on what's perceived in a selfish manner, mm -hmm. but in a manner of uh, know your priorities. Mm. We tend to sometimes give too much, and forget to nurture ourselves. Yes. So know how to prioritize, know how to set your boundaries, and uh, um, and know that uh, there is really no. Uh, mistake that life is really just a fun journey those are great tips those are honestly <laughs> i think things that we tend to forget we tend to get so caught up in just the hustle and bustle of life and we're just all over the place that we forget about ourselves Correct. or or we think that if i think about myself i'm being selfish Correct. it's hard to be selfless without mm -hmm. forgetting yourself mm -hmm. The best analogy I have to this is when we go into an airplane mm -hmm. and they tell us that before we put uh, a mask on somebody next to us, yeah. we need to put the mask on ourselves. So this is it, you know, I mean, as much as we nurture somebody else mm -hmm. and give love to our loved ones, we right. need to do the same to ourselves. Right, because at the end of the day, if we're too tired or we don't have the confidence and, and we can't move forward, then there's no, we're no good to anyone else. Absolutely, absolutely. That's really good. You can't give from an empty cup. You need to have your cup full. Very true. That's <laughs> a very good point. I like that. <laughs> so what are some of the tips that you give for success? Um, I think the main one is really um, don't believe the people outside of your head. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is the main one. Along the way, I heard several times um, Actually, even before I left Brazil, you're never going to make it. You can't mm -hmm. pass the boards. You can't uh, become an oral surgeon. You can't, you can't, you can't. And I never, I never bought into it. I never mm -hmm. really paid attention to what people were saying. I knew what I wanted, and I went for it. And um, I trusted that uh, 
you know, I believe in God. So I know yeah. that God will definitely uh, will guide you and you will get to the place that you need to be. Well, I'm so glad you had the confidence to move forward and thank you didn't you. let anyone bring you down. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. So that's you. always very important to have. It is, it is. So Fadia, another thing that I think is important is mm -hmm. nobody reaches the top alone. We don't just, you know, one day wake up and say we're there. We all have help along the way. Uh, did you have any mentors that helped you and <laughs> anyone that really pushed you to do what you want on, on both ends, oral surgery and personal life coaching? Well, with oral surgery, um, I wouldn't say I had a mentor per se, mm -hmm. but I did have the support of my family, which was really uh, interesting and very helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, even though I have to say to, to a certain point, when they saw how <laughs> extensive the training was, they were like, are you sure you want to be in school for so long? <laughs> but uh, yes. Um, but I think the main thing uh, in my, per my case was really the fact that I... Um, I looked up to people mm -hmm. who I felt that were accomplished and uh, and really people who accomplished great things and I noticed the pattern in these people was really the fact that they were going through a path that nobody has gone before and okay. they, they were not afraid to put the effort mm -hmm. and uh, to pave the way so um, so it's so it's always about looking up to people yeah. that you feel that can inspire you that you like what they do and mm -hmm. how they carry themselves and the kind of uh, uh, integrity yeah. and uh, and uh, things that they show so um, you can emulate those things yeah. um, but I agree a mentor is very important and that's actually another reason why I wanted to do coaching is to be of, of, a, of a mentorship capacity you know really I would like to in, inspire people to really uh, not be afraid of their dreams you know <laughs> to help give back in your own way exactly yes so when you were doing the personal life coaching um, was there anyone that helped you with that because it seems like it's not, like you said, it's not as structured. Mm -hmm. So how do you find someone to help you out along the way with that? Well, uh, when I chose to become a coach, I decided to get training for that. Mm -hmm. So I went to school, I went through the training, and um, I and during the training, you meet other people who are trying to become coaches or they are mm -hmm. coaches. So uh, yes, those people have helped me uh, to uh, be able to, um, work on the way things work with uh well that's good um it, it's good to have someone to help you out because especially going into something new you don't know what to expect and, and you don't know what you don't know correct so it's always good to have someone there and um so just kind of an ending if you want to give us your three top tips for success in setting goals and achieving your goals what would you tell us first of all dream big dream big and the bigger the dream the better mm -hmm. and uh, I think that's the fuel to life it's important to have really big aspirations and big dreams mm -hmm. um, second uh, work on nurturing yourself you need to love yourself because when we love ourselves uh, mm -hmm. everything um, it becomes easier mm -hmm. uh, even the decisions that we make are like better yeah everything seems to go a little bit smoother mm -hmm. when you have that and uh, the third one is really have faith i think the third one is really to be connected to god and and feel that um, you're always supported no matter what that's good to have mm -hmm. and just real quickly before we go something i think we all have a problem with and we have a hard time with is we set goals for ourselves and we achieve them and we think now what so how do you think is the best way for us to go about setting new goals for ourselves and like I tell my clients what makes you smile what makes you tick what mm -hmm. would make you want to wake up in the morning before your alarm and get out of bed and make you excited about life. 
and and that's the goals you should set. It, this is the, uh, you know, and don't be afraid to change your mind. Yeah. You know, it's, it, if I decide now that I don't want to be a neurosurgeon anymore, I just want to be exclusively a life coach, um, yeah. I'm not afraid. You know, I'm not yeah. afraid and, and to think like, it, it's never too late and it's yeah. never, um, there's nothing that's in our way other than our own thoughts mm -hmm. to achieve those things that makes us happy. That's very true. Yeah. Well, I'm very glad to have had you today. And I Thank think you. some of the very key points that we can take away from Fadia is don't be afraid to go out of your comfort zone. Don't be afraid to, to move forward. Um, even physically leave your, your community. It's okay. It's okay. You don't, don't stick to what the norm is. Don't stick to to anything that we have, you know, I think it's great to move forward, constantly push, reach your dreams, and always follow through with them. Thank so, you. <laughs> thank you so much for coming today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And again, my name is Tahara Hasham, and our guest tonight was Dr. Fadia, and uh, thank you for watching Her Path to Success.